Wake up at Holiday Inn Express to a can't-miss breakfast that's free with every stay. Count on all the hot, fresh coffee you need and an incredible breakfast buffet that has something for everyone, like eggs, cinnamon rolls, and even hot, fresh pancakes with all the toppings you crave. Next time, do yourself a favor and stay at a Holiday Inn Express with a can't-miss breakfast that's free with every stay. So, when you wake up at Holiday Inn Express, you'll wake up happy, a part of IHG Hotels and Resorts. I'm a maid who would marry and will take with no qualm any Tom, Dick, or Harry, any Harry, Dick, or Tom. I'm a maid mad to marry and will take double quick any Tom, Dick, or Harry, any Tom, Harry, or Dick. I'm the man. My name is Richard Dix, and this is How Did That Happen? A podcast where I look at everyday things or events and try to figure out how they came to be. Every week, I will research one topic, and by the end of the episode, I hope to truly have the answer to the question, how did that happen? All right, welcome back to another episode of How Did That Happen? HDTH, this is episode 60, and we are going to be talking about names and things. I know, I couldn't come up with a better title. I thought long and hard, you know, it's almost it was exactly the same thing for when we we did the... um, the episode about Phillips head screwdrivers, and initially it was supposed just to be about screwdrivers, and then it ended up being about every tool that's named after any inventor in history, and so it just becomes tools named for people. And I just was like, we got to do better than that. I hope names and things is a better title. I'm sure you guys will let me know if it's not. But um, yeah, this is um episode 60. We're trying to keep things going a little bit. I've just I'm really am working on uh, trying to. We, we, we just got an Instagram account. We'll see how that goes. I just wanted to try and get an, you know this podcast in front of some more eyes. I'm working on trying to get some conversations recorded uh, to add to this podcast, interviewing some different people about different ways that, that they think. I think that's, that's gonna, maybe going to be the next thing for me is um, getting people's thoughts on how things happen, maybe even before or after I end up telling you guys how they do. You know, to just get kind of the every man's idea of names and things like, for, you know, for example, just for this episode, how do we get Peggy from Margaret? I'd love to ask people and see what they think and then go ahead and talk about it, you know, after the fact and find out really how we get Peggy from Margaret. And we're definitely going to learn that today. But yeah, that's just what's on the plate for the podcast over the next few months and years. What am I watching is always a little housekeeping before we get going with the episode. I just watched the movie The Menu on HBO Max. OMG. It was good, like very good. Um, not your usual plot. These people go to this like island or something like that. Yeah, it's basically an island, and they have this. They want to have this amazing meal with this great chef, like Michelin star, all this you know stuff or whatever. But they get there, uh, and they find out that they're all gonna die at the end of the meal. Uh, you know, it's not really a. I'll leave it there. Like it's definitely worth a watch. Um, it keeps you. It keeps you engaged. What I will say at the end, I just wasn't into how they ended the movie. They made the chick just, I don't know, she was trying to be, I thought she was doing too much, but that's just me. But the movie itself, definitely worth a watch. It's called The Menu on HBO Max. Um, I also just watched Violent Night on Peacock. I'm a little late. I know it's a Christmas Christmas movie Um, because I was actually late because I really didn't want to see it. I was very reluctant to watch this when it first came out. It just seemed like a very odd take on Santa Claus, but I'm telling you, they actually may have actually done it right. It was, it was funny, right? There was some comedy. There was a little bit of drama, right? Even some emotion, which I was not expecting at all. Like, this movie actually had, like, it was a movie, you know? Um, very violent, though, I will say. Very violent. If gory violence is not your thing, then skip it. Like, hard pass. If you do not want to see this movie. If, if it's blood and guts is not your thing, then Santa Claus just goes through a house with a sledgehammer and just messes people up. Like, he has a nickname for his for his, his sledgehammer. He calls it the Skull Crusher. Just to give you an idea of how violent Santa is and it's a violent night. And I got one more movie for it because I've actually been watching a few movies. So I usually only do two, but I got one more. Uh, and it's The Shotgun Wedding, which I just saw on Amazon Prime. And it's got Jennifer Lopez. And she is pretty good in this. Like... I think you can see how she hadn't maybe acted in a while. It was a little bit touch and go for the first couple scenes. I'm not going to lie. It was a little choppy, but it definitely found its stride. Um, you get to see her body in there. So if you're into that, trust me, it's it's worth She's still got it. Um, and there are some good laughs as well as different. It's a different take on a marriage movie, like a whole wedding movie, you know, because I almost thought I knew what it was going to be before I pressed play, but it was not. It's definitely not. So check that out. Um, as always, what am I listening to? I'm listening to This American Life, which is a podcast from NPR. 
Um, been listening to it for years. They do profiles on different topics and people in America. It's not so much like biographies, but more like investigating and shining a light on some things that would have otherwise gone unnoticed in society. If you went into, into stuff like that, it is done great. I believe it was done by the, the man Ira Glass. I believe it was his name. I'm not sure. I think so, though. Um, the other podcast that I'll recommend to you is a podcast called Chrissy Chaos, which is done by a comedian named Chris Stefano. Um, he involves his family a lot, including his transgender uncle-in-law named T.T. Jerry, who just got out of prison. It is a it, it's a hoot. If you're in the mood for just a good, solid laugh, I mean, this 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 is the pod for you. But as always, if I can plug those pods, I can plug my mini episode, BSB, Bitesized Bios, out now as always. Uh, this most recent episode, I profile Ellen DeGeneres, and we find out a lot about her. We find out that she was molested as a child, and also that she has a brother in show business who looks like the vampire version of her. But yeah, definitely check that out. We've done 17 Bite Size Bios now. We've covered, I mean, we've covered Ellen, we've covered Hillary Clinton, Michelle Obama, Chuck Norris, uh, Morgan Freeman, Nelson Mandela, William Shakespeare, Al- Alexander the Great, Houdini, um, all those, and more and more to come, and even more that I didn't list. So if you're into, like, just quick kind of snippets of people's lives, which I always find to be interesting, definitely check that out. It's every Thursday at 4.30 a.m. Um, do the same thing as we do with HTTH. The transcripts are online at the along with the works cited and everything. I don't think there's much else I need to say before we get on to the episode. Um, always, pre- always thank you for pressing play. I really do appreciate it, guys. The numbers are going up. I think with the last three months, um, every month has been larger than the last, so I can only say thank you. Um, and yeah, so without further ado, as we know to do, here is the episode. Okay, so our first name that needs an explanation it's it's so hard to figure out what what to call this episode uh at, at the time of recording i think it's called names and things i don't know if it's going to continue to be names and things but that's the only thing i can kind of bring to mind right now so the first one we're going to talk about is john doe i know you guys may all be you know be familiar with this maybe you're not um you know john doe is a term that's used for a lot of um dead bodies they find and can't identify or, or any guy any kind of person that we can't really put a name to and it turns out that we've been doing that for about a thousand years uh the the initial kind of uh use of this was in the medieval times specifically maybe in the early 1300s late 1200s it was it was used in in legal terms it was it was um basically as a way to create they would create these fictional people because they couldn't because the laws were i guess they say too technical which i don't quite understand why how that would work out but the laws were were, were written to, uh, t- technically they say, to apply these to specific people when they're, let's say you're pressing charges against somebody to um, get some money from them or say you're owed something from them. For whatever reason, the way the law was written, you couldn't do it to a real person, but you would do it to a fake person uh, vis-a-vis the John Doe and or Richard Rowe, which is the opposite. Um, I guess another interchangeable version of that. And once you create that fictional person, I know this is a little weird, then you can then you amass all the charges that you were going to put on that real person you put them on the fake person but since you've done so that allows you to then actually reap the benefits that you were going to reap if had you actually pressed the charges on the real person i hope that's making sense um so that's that started around the 1300s continues to go and basically that's how we get john doe as being a fake name um i tried to find real i tried to find real like 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 concrete as to where when it started to become used for dead people uh, but I really couldn't. I would have just. I'm. I'm gonna hazard a guess and say it was probably in the the, the mid 16 to 1700s. Just to. I don't know why that feels right, but. But basically, even before then, it had always been a fake name. So it started with legal terms in the medieval times, and of course, Jane Doe is just you know the female version of that that comes along. And we do find that this is this is pretty synonymous in in most cultures. They have um, what are called placeholder names. This is just the kind of the ones from from the west and that's really all we're going to cover as far as like the different types of um names we're just all more western names i'm not going to go into the into the the, the eastern side or, or or you know anything like that maybe for another episode it's just i don't know there's there's a lot but then not a lot at the same time um so that brings us the next one is going to be the joneses keeping up with the joneses i've always wondered this um also just because I don't know. Maybe, maybe I, I've never known that many Joneses. I've never, I don't say the word Joneses very often. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, keeping up with the Joneses is a uh, colloquial saying that basically means you know you engage in one-upmanship. You know, you purchase status items, um, both large and small, to outdo you know the next person, the person, the 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 
proverbial uh, Joneses, the other people who are always got the next best thing. And it turns out that the Joneses, little Jones, they were actually real people at one point in time. They lived in New in a place called Rhinebeck, New York, and they had a huge mansion, huge mansion. It was uh, seventy six hundred square feet. Um, it was known as a vacation spot for the wealthy of New York City. Uh, the family, let's see, the, the, the woman's name was Elizabeth Shermerhorn Jones. And she's the one who actually made that house. But that's, so they're the people who are basically, you know, they are the original Joneses to keep up with. They, they, they went out there in the 1850s and just made, you know, everybody envious. So Miss uh, Shermerhorn, which I, as I'll call her, that's more interesting than Jones. Uh, she was related to two prominent New York families, uh, including the Astors. And let's see what was the other set. And the Edith Wharton, or the or the, the, the the Wharton family. So they were they were already like American aristocracy before, um, but then that. So they just had money on top of money. And the name of that huge mansion was called the Windcliff. I've, I've always said when you get to the point when you when your house has a name, you've made it. You've arrived. But it was just, the, and, and, and so the, like the idea of them keeping up with the Joneses just comes from how just immaculate this house was, and how just it was just it was just ridiculous. It had twenty four rooms in it, um, Tiffany skylights. It was built. It was in the in the in the um, like eleventh and twelfth century of like France and England, like in that sort of architecture with arches and towers, uh, tennis courts. Had a boat, carriage house. Um, and they say that th this house specifically was so just large and ostentatious, it was said to have basically have single handedly kind of kicked off a real estate boom in itself, which, you know, was kind of then your people are always trying to keep, they're trying to, they're, they're trying to catch up. They're trying to keep up. Keep up with who? Keep up with the Joneses. So the Joneses, like I said, were a real group of people from New York in the mid 1800s. That's where we get the term from. I'm just happy that they're actually real. I don't know. I just you wouldn't. I wouldn't expect them to be real. So the, the Joneses are real people. The next thing we're going to talk about, name wise, in this names and things catch all we have here is how we get Dick for Richard. And Dick is a nickname that is most often used for Richard. Uh, it likely originated in the Middle Ages. And this is the wild part. We will find this for a number of things we're going to cover here in the next few minutes. That it was a big thing for them back in the day to just replace the first letter of your name and rhyme it so that is literally why we get um like bill and bob you know what i mean for rob and will because the same thing with dick because rick was a was a big nickname it still is for, for people named richard for a long time and so when you have all these richards and then then you got a few that are going by rick and then you got more richards you need to classify they're like well, let's just switch the r for a d and we'll rhyme it and this guy's name is dick now that's that's really where it comes from. It's not. It's it's. You want it to be more complex than that, but at the same time, it's just you. When you know people, it's also not surprising. And so that's that's how we get the same thing for Will. You have these Williams. You know, then you get Wills, and then it's like, well, we got more Williams that we got to give nicknames to. So all right, we'll just switch that W with a B. Will is now Bill, right? Same thing for Roberts. Robs are now Bobs, and it it doesn't make sense, like I said, but at the same time, it does. And if you're wondering how the connection with a, with a penis came about, with dick, dick for penis, it has more to do with um, the term dick being used as a cliche for an everyman or any kind of man sort of thing, and then kind of goes from there. But there's, the jury's still out as far as to where that came from. It's said to probably have originated as far as in writing from like the late 1890s with British soldiers as a, uh, like a nickname, like a slur, basically. Uh, but they say before that, it was it was... Uh, taboo, so no one was was writing that word, so no one who no one really knows when they started using it because no one was writing down when they started using it. You know, we can only notice when someone kind of slipped up and wrote it in somewhere, which is probably about 130 years ago. But of course, Dick isn't the only name that emerged from this rhyme-based nicknaming system that was so popular a thousand years ago. And it's funny to me; it's just funny because I don't know. You 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 think that these that these people are so different than us? Because there's so much time in between when we lived, you know, but we're the same organism. It's almost like looking at a dog now, as opposed to a dog 700 years ago. That dog was still a dog. You know what I mean? He was he was eating different things, and he was 
doing different things, but his thought process wasn't that different, and the things that he was doing probably weren't that different than what he's doing now. The same things with human you, humans. You look back at humans 700 to 1,000 years ago, like life itself was harder, but the actual, it's like the, the act of living itself it, it has not changed that much. You know, you have a bunch of friends, like I said, you know, I, 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 I have five Wills in my life, I have five Williams in my life, but I'm not going to call you all William. You know, interesting enough, um, when I worked at a restaurant one time that had, we had, I think, I think it was like four Roberts, like five Roberts that worked at that restaurant. And it was just, it got confusing to the point where we just all agreed, hey, all right, we're going to get really crude. I mean, crude looking back, we had, we had, what do we have? We had Rob, right? We had Robert and we had white Rob then we had black Rob and then we had red Rob because he was a redhead. And it was just, I would, I had never been in a situation like that where you legit they were like oh who said that oh it was it was red rob or who said that oh it was it was black rob where we're like there's just too many robs so you get it. it's like can we call one of y'all bob you know what i mean i don't know so you get you get why it does emerge um out of here but that like i said that's not the only place that actually happens from that is really where we get the idea of people using peggy as a nickname for margaret which people some may have some people may have never heard of um but i've known myself a, a margaret who when I knew her as Peggy for a long time. And then one day we were talking and she was like, yeah, well, my real name is Margaret. And I'm just like, you say that so like calmly as if like that's regular, like every, every Peggy's a Margaret. And she's like, they are. And I warm, you know what I mean? So I'm paraphrasing, but so yeah, if you know Peggy's, if you know any Peggy's out there, you know, Margaret's bro. You don't even know that. You don't, you don't even know, you don't even know that woman, you know? Um, but so Margaret is what they call a, a radio, a, 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 a radicanum, a radicanum. Radicanim? Radiconim. Radicinim. Radicinim sounds cool, but I don't think that's what it is. Um, basically, it's where you take and you cut down the name of, uh, to, a, to one syllable, the first syllable. And if you do that, you, if you do that with Margaret, you get Marg, right? And so in certain dialects, that R is going to be pronounced very lightly. So it's not like Marg, it's more like Ma, right? Ma. Right? And then you get from there, I guess they say in, in the early. 1200s on England, the Mog kind of goes from 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 Mog to Meg. So as far as like nicknames for Margaret, because based off how you speak, where you are, you go from Marg to Mag to Meg, and then we get to the rhyming, like we were just talking about for Rob and Bob and Will and Bill and Dick and Rick. The holidays start here at Baker's with a variety of options to celebrate traditions, old and new. You could do a classic herb roasted turkey, or spice it up and make turkey tacos. Serve up a go-to shrimp cocktail or use Simple Truth wild-caught shrimp for your first Cajun risotto. Make creamy mac and cheese or a spinach artichoke fondue from our selection of Murray's cheese. No matter how you shop, Baker's has all the freshest ingredients to embrace all your holiday traditions. Baker's, fresh for everyone. We go from Meg to Peg, right? Then, you know, you know your friend Peg? You like her, you call her Peggy. She's Peggy. That's how we get Peggy from Margaret. I mean, that's why we do this. How did that happen? I just, I just, you, I just told you. It's, it's. If you learn anything today, you learned that. If you know a Margaret, you also know a Peg. Coincidentally, I'm seeing here that if you know a Margaret, you may also know a Daisy, and so that Daisy is another nickname for Margaret. It's like there's nobody just like Margaret. If you have to come up with multiple nicknames for a name, then just maybe don't use that name. Um, but so Margaret is, or Daisy is a nickname for Margaret because um, the French, I think the French name for Margaret is Daisy, or there's, or there's a Daisy plant. Let me get this right. Oh, okay. So yeah. So it's same. I don't know if I. It's kind of like what I said is that the the French form of Margaret is used as a as a name for the name for the flower for for the for the Daisy flower. So that's how you. It's a long form way of calling somebody Daisy because your name is Margaret. It's like, if we're not, what if we're not French, you know, but that's wild. I didn't. And I'm also learning that Margaret comes from Marguerite, which is Greek for Pearl. We are all over the place today, uh, but all about names. And I, I don't think I've mentioned this before. Or maybe I have, but I, I was really into words in college. Uh, almost was what I wanted to do for a living. Like linguistics really interests me in the way the reason people say things based off where they live or. Or, or, or where they're from is, is, is very interesting, interesting to me. But so this is this whole Margaret Peggy Pearl situation is, is a is I find it to be very interesting. 
Uh, from there, we'll get to Joe Joe Blogs, uh, Joe Blogs, and Fred Blogs. It's another one of those placeholder names, but it is the the European one, the one for the UK. Um, and you're more likely to see, I believe, I believe it is when they're over there, or like the dead bodies over there are called Joe Blogs instead of John Doe's. Um, I don't know why John Doe sounds cooler than Joe Blogs, but Joe Blogs also gets used in other stuff. It's used. It was, it was written up in um, literature. Um, it was written in a it was, it was I think, first seen in a collection of short stories from the 1930s called The Outcast, written by a man named, oh, what's this guy's name? Oh, I don't think I have it. No, it was, the, but the, the, the Outcast, the short stories were, were published in the Shipley Times Express. So, yeah, no author, but we do have where it came from. So, yeah, I mean, that's not as interesting. And, and I wonder, you have to wonder because... And we'll find, because we, we'll, I'll, I'll tell you, I don't think I mentioned in the intro, we, we're going to tell you how we got soccer from football. Um, and it is somewhat of an interesting story. That's going to be in the things I didn't know before segment. But you wonder how we ended up with John Doe over here, and they end up with Joe Bloggs over there, if John Doe originated over there. You know, but it just, you know, time is, time and life were a weird thing. The next one we'll talk about is every Tom, Dick, and Harry, which I've heard my whole life. And I don't know, I thought it would have a more recent uh, origin story, but it goes back to our friend Shakespeare. The first time I believe you see it is in Shakespeare. Well, no, I think I'm seeing here they're saying, what are they saying? Tom, uh, John Owen was for the first to have done it. Let me see if that's right. It's not. No. It's just, so Tom Owen did it. Or just, I don't know if I'm call Tom Owen. John Owen did it later. But the first time we see it is in a play, Shakespeare's play called Henry IV, Part One. That was in 1597. And he is quoted as saying, I am sworn, brother, to a leash of drawers, and can call them by their names as Tom, Dick, and Francis. So the Harry came later. But Tom and Dick were definitely there. And so it was very common for these names to be bounced around, kind of used interchangeably to just mention people. And this is what I mentioned earlier when we talk about like how Dick became you know, kind of a slang for penis. This, this is when it happened. When, this is the beginning of when that happened because it went from just being uh, rhyming it with your name is Rick, your name is Dick, to being more ubiquitous with just the common man and what you men have moving on from there. But it was very common for it to be used in Elizabethan English during that time, Dick and Tom, Tom and Tib, Jack and Tom. Um, so that is where we get the idea of every Tom, Dick, and Harry, which I just, I don't know, I assume it was made by some guy in like the 70s, because there's a, there's a very, you don't think about the fact that for the last 500 years there's been dudes named Tom, Dick, and Harry, you know what I mean? Because you, you look back and some dudes have some wild names, you know, like, but some have some very regular names as well. Let's see, and the last one I'll give to you before we get on to the next segments. The next segments, oh no, I have one more thing after that. That's true, yeah. So I have two more things, and then we'll get on to the things I didn't know before, which is going to be a little lengthy this time. I have some more stuff. Like I said, we're going to tell you where soccer came from. I'm going to tell you about, tell you about some other names and why we get nicknames for them, um, in addition to how... Well, yeah, we'll just I'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So uh, the last real name we're going to talk about is John Q. Public. John Q. Public, which the first time I ever heard of this was when I watched that Denzel movie called John Q. I don't know. I didn't know people were called. I've since heard it in society, you know, but I and it's a cool it, to me that that's cool than calling somebody a Tom, a Tom, Dick and Harry or John Doe. It's like John Q. John Q. Public. He just sounds cool, you know, but really I've, I've heard it in the sense of like it is like every every person like. The man you see that comes off the street, that's John Q. Public. He's just, just the, you know, he is the, uh, the, the average American person. I, I, you know, now, I think it was originally was for, for men, but I think now it's for, for everybody. And so the Q in John Q. stands for Quizquam. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, and it really comes from back when America was kind of first being settled and there was a large German presence in America. Uh, a lot of the Germans that came over from Germany spoke Latin as well, and they used a term um, in their language called quizquam. I really hope I'm getting that right, uh, which was a gender-neutral meaning for anyone. And so then we get John, because John was a generic term for a male at the time. You get John Q. And public is just, you know, I think that, that comes along because probably to make it more ubiquitous for people who didn't know Latin. You know, pub the, the, the public to me, when things are public, things, things are public for everyone. You know what I mean? So I think that, that, that that's, that's probably more for the more modern audience. Um, but definitely, I think it's really interesting that John Q actually means something. I mean, John doesn't mean much, but the fact that the Q hung around and it wasn't just some random thing that you get thrown in there so it sounds cool. It's really just, you know, John Quisquam means John anyone. 
you know, which to me is more spot on than John Doe. So the last thing before we get out of here to the next segment is um, I came across some, how do you describe these? Things that you didn't know had names. Like, there's all these things in the world that we kind of just know that exist. But we don't, you don't always think about what their actual technical name for them is. So to give you an example, the first one, um, the air, how the air smells after, after it rains. That has a, that's a, has a specific name. It's called petrichor. That's the name for the smell after rain. Who would have knew, right? Or known? I didn't know. Right, and there's, I have, I have a few of these I'll share with you, and then we'll get on to the next segment. Um, let's see, there's what they call a scurry funge. Scurry funge is the time you spend running around frantically cleaning before guests arrive at your house. That's, so there's an actual, if you know what I'm talking about, if you were a kid, and friend, you know your, your parents' friends are coming over, and you're cleaning all the stuff you never cleaned before, mom's like, put this all in the closet, da da da, da. that's a scurry funge. Next time it happens, put a name to it, it might help. Um, let's see. The collie wobbles. The collie wobbles are the technical term for butterflies in your stomach. I love the fact that that's. I'm mean, next time. I'm just gonna say I've got the collie wobbles, and I bet someone probably thinks I have to go to the bathroom because that's what it sounded. Like. Got a case of the collie wobbles. Um, vagitus or vag vagitus is the particular cry of a newborn baby. So it's a, not just. It's a cry of a specific type of actual organism. It's not just anything crying. It's a, it's a newborn baby. This one's interesting because I... This is just another one thing. that You, you assume that they have names. You just don't know what they are. So phosphenes. Phosphenes are the strange lights and flashing things that you see when you close your eyes. When you close your eyes, you see those things darting across and it's like different like colors you can't quite make out. They're called phosphenes. Like there's names for them and they exist. And then the last one I think I'll share with you Okay, well, I'll give you two more. There's a thing called an called an app thong. An app thong. Those are the silent letters that you don't pronounce in words. You know that are there, but you just like you just skip over them. It's a little little agreement between you and that word. You ain't gonna mention that letter. You know that type of thing. Um, and the last one, the last one is called. I don't. I, I'm, I'm gonna get it wrong because it doesn't look like a real word. Temesis. 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 I don't know. It's, it's one of those. It's T-M-E-S-I-S. -S. And this is when you separate a word into two parts, right, for effect. And then you put an extra syllable in the middle, like apps of freaking lootly. That's a temesis. Like I said, all these things have names for them. You just never think about the fact that they have names for them. I, this whole names and things episode has been eye-opening for me, and there's still more to come. Uh, but that, I believe, is it for the, for the actual meat part of the segment. And that is how names and things happened. And now it's time for the roundup. The roundup. The roundup. And we're gonna round it up. John Doe was originally a legal term from the Middle Ages. Dick is a nickname for Richard because people were really into rhyming nicknames a thousand years ago. Petrichor is the name for the smell of the air after it rains. Things I didn't know before. And now I know them. Never heard of these things. What are they? All right, so for things that I didn't know before, uh, for this segment we have a few things. Sometimes I don't have as many. Sometimes I have one. Sometimes I have five. Um, this first one is about soccer and why we call it that i've always wondered i feel like i've had it explained to me before maybe not but i'm gonna give you the quick gist of it basically soccer was created the term was created in england spoiler alert i did not know that um it was made because basically the way and i didn't know this either like when they were creating these sports some of them they would be named after either the schools that created them, you know, or like, or like, like the governing body might then create some sort of name for it. So like, cause rugby, they say was actually named for an English boarding school where it was created. So it's, it is, it's a type of football, but it was called, you know, rugby football. 
So like that's to, to distinguish from the other types of football. And so of course, you know, the, the, the English had football as far as like what they call football. So they wanted to make sure that you can, you know, know the difference between rugby football, the, the, the football for the football association. And so the, the name that, that, that the game that they played under the football association, which is one of the first governing bodies of, of actual football in England, that became known as association football. So that's how they, 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 they differentiate between rugby football and the regular like football, like soccer, that's, you know, in, a, in, in England. But what they would call it, and this, is, this is where we really get the name for it, what they would call it is basically, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure this has to do with, with, their, with their dial, with, with their, their accent, it's like they would call it ass soccer, like as I think, as, as, as to be like for association football, like it's ass soccer football. You know, that's I, I'm not I'm, I don't think I'm pronouncing it right, but they would spell it almost A S S O C C E R, but the A S S you know O C that was supposed to be for association. It's like, it's, like, it's like saying it's like quickly saying association football, but leaving the football off. And so that's because that, like I said, that was to differentiate from regular rugby football. And so once it comes over to America, about forty years later, they initially call it, you know, football, but they they do the same thing because we already have American football over here. So they have to distinguish between American football. So they just take kind of what the, the nickname that the Brits had for football and apply it to their to our version of their sport. And that's how we get soccer. And it comes from, like I said, I'm probably not saying it right, but it's like as soccer. Like it's, it was just a nickname for 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 association football back in the late 19th uh, century. And then we have here, I have a couple more of those, um, like how we got nicknames for, for certain names. And then I'm going to tell you how we get the name Richard, because that's my name. Just period, just like where it came from, because I saw it when I was doing this research. And I was like, that's actually interesting. I never knew that. Um, but yeah, uh, Ted for Ed is a lot like what we were just talking about earlier with Rob and Bob and, and Dick and Rick and Bill and Will. There was a, just a large, they were really into swapping letters out and rhyming, rhyming people's names. They thought it was just the bee's knees and so you get eds you can just add a t now you got a ted you know and then but also at the same time ted was already a nickname for theodore so it was one of the few names out there that has ted that has basically two different like nicknames or can it be applied to two different names this next one i didn't know i've heard people this it's it's how we how we got um nancy or ann to be short why is why is the short form of Anne actually longer than the original name? It's what why how did we get Nancy for Anne? And it has to do with just the more we you know, it's like, it's like, it's it's like that telephone game, you know, where you say something and you say it to the next person, you say it to the next person. That that's as someone who studied communication for years, that is how we get words. That's how we. That's why that's that's why it doesn't surprise me when I see things like this because you you wonder how it happened. It seems far fetched, but it's like no, just imagine doing that. Imagine playing the telephone game. For a thousand years, imagine. I mean, and, and if you haven't played it, I'm sure. I mean, I haven't done it since I was a kid. But you, you would just take one phrase, and you would whisper it in one person. We'd all sit in a circle, and by the time you get back to the other, the whole, whole other end of the circle, it's a whole different phrase. It's a whole different. Phrase. It always is. And so that that in itself is the evolution of communication. So back to said all that to say to explain how we get Nancy for Anne. It has to do with the affectionate phrase, I guess, mine Anne. So like you would say that. You know, you love the Anne so much, it's mine Anne, that eventually turns into my Nan. Um, then there was also a big thing about putting CYs on the end of people's names to show love and affection as well. So that's how we get my Nancy, which is how you evolve into having a nickname that is longer than your actual name. Uh, and the last one that I have is pretty simple. It's how we get Charles for Chuck. It's basically just Chuckin was the Middle English name for Charles. So, you know, when you translate Charles, you get Chuckin. That's why we have Chuck. Not, not that, not that deep. And the last one, like I said, I'll tell you how the name Richard came about. And so most people believe that it comes from the the Proto-Germanic word Rick Harthu, which basically just means hard ruler. Uh, Rick means ruler, Harthu means hard. Um, this was adopted into the Old High German as Rickohard. And from there you get to the Old French and Old English, they call it Rick, Richard, and then you get Richard, Richard, you know, and that's... It's funny because uh, on, on my journalism team in college, for whatever reason, that was um, they accidentally called me Rig Hard, R I G H A R D, and that became my nickname for that the whole time I was there. And it, we all laughed, we always laughed, no one ever understood. 
just the teeth like the not the, the, the supervisor one day when she was calling out like see he was here she was like rig hard and we were all like what but beside the point so just you can see i can see how the the evolution happened All right, and that's been another episode of How Did That Happen? HGTH. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. This was one that I was just trying to find a narrative for, trying to make it, trying to find a through way to get, because all these things interest me, all these different names, all the different reasons to why we have the names for this stuff. It does really interest me. I just couldn't figure out how to make it a story or how to make it, you know, kind of like a, a, a topic. And that's why I said it's, it's, there's 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 so much to it but i really i really hope you guys like it and as always if, if you love what you heard here there's more where that came from um over at httthappen.com you will always find a written version of what you just heard as well as photos and videos it helped me create the episode there's a work cited up there as well it is it is linked to the twitter account there's also a blog up there um and speaking of the twitter account there's also now an instagram account that was just made under the same handle at httthappen so if you go over to instagram you'll find I'm not really sure what you're going to find over there yet. I'm still trying to figure it out. But I'm just trying to get this podcast in front of more eyes. I'm um, hoping that it can just, you know, we can all grow and help, help keep finding out how things happen. But um, yeah, like I said, if you like this, like and subscribe wherever you find podcasts. It really helps the pod grow. You can give us five stars if you want to. If you want to give us two stars and tell us why you don't want to give us five stars, that is fine as well. Constructive criticism is always welcome. Um, but yeah, as always, thank you guys for pressing play. We'll see you in a couple days with the next Bite Size Bio. At Granger, we're for the ones who specialize in saving the day and for the ones who've mastered the art of keeping business moving. We offer industrial-grade supplies for every industry with same-day pickup and next-day delivery on most orders, all backed by real people ready to help. So you can get the right answers and products right when you need them. Call, click Grainger.com, or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. The holidays start here at Baker's with a variety of options to celebrate traditions old and new. Whether you're making a traditional roasted turkey or spicy turkey tacos, your go-to shrimp cocktail, or your first Cajun risotto, Baker's has all the freshest ingredients to embrace your traditions. Baker's, fresh for everyone. We've locked in low prices to help you save big store-wide. Look for the locked in low prices tags and enjoy extra savings throughout the store. Baker's, fresh for everyone.